Basically, it was a phase three study where patients who had generalized myasthenia and they could have uh, mostly had acetylcholine receptor antibodies, but also they could have musk antibodies. And they uh, came into the study, or a few could not have antibodies at all, detectable. They came into the study. Thank so you. they were given either placebo or, or lower or higher dose of uh, Vestigo. And they were, the treatment is subcutaneous. So it's not into the vein, it's not intravenous. Subcutaneous meaning under the skin, sub under cutaneous skin. And it was infusions lasting an hour usually. And uh, the investigators were double blind, didn't know what the patient was getting, neither did the patient. And they were treated every week for six weeks. And then there was a rest period and then they could be retreated uh, during the 26 week double blind period, depending on their status. So the status was measured and the primary endpoint was the myasthenia gravis activities of daily living uh, score. This is a patient reported uh, symptom that measures uh, everyday activities that the patient may be doing, physical activities, and indicating whether they were able to do them or not uh, with different levels. And an improvement in this um, compared to the baseline in those who had acetylcholine receptor positive status uh, was considered uh, to the, was the endpoint when it was measured against what happened in placebo. So the uh, the both doses of Restigo showed that the patients improved on this ADL. Now this ADL or activities of daily living is a very subjective thing. Um, that is um, patient reported and um, not to do with a physical examination or a physician assessment. Uh, but the main secondary outcome was the quantitative myasthenia gravis score, which does measure physical examination in different levels of it and is more considered more objective by most physicians in, in the field. And this too showed improvements from baseline for both Restigo uh, groups uh, compared to the placebo group. So this separation um, is in, in these, plus there were multiple other secondary endpoints that all improved as well. And then when you looked at the subscores, you had improvement in the eye subscore, the throat subscore and the limb subscore. So all of these things went in the right direction and improved and it's subcutaneous and it led to approval, fast track approval. I think one reason it was fast tracked was because the only existing therapy at the moment is an intravenous therapy, another FC receptor inhibitor. So that implies um, more um, cost with healthcare services whereas with the subcutaneous form is going to be able to be self-administered by the patients uh, in their homes. You won't have to have them coming to an infusion center. Uh, that is the future. So I think, I think that led to the rapid uh, uh, review and approval. Uh, so it's the first subcutaneous FC receptor inhibitor proven effective. And the other big thing is it didn't just work in acetylcholine receptor positive patients, which is great and expected because of the prior FC receptor inhibitor, but it also worked in those who had musk antibodies because uh, the musk antibody response was even stronger than the response in the acetylcholine receptor patients, even though you had a smaller number, far smaller number but they improved compared to those who were on placebo. And in the prior FC receptor study of the IV product, the musk patients did not show a difference from placebo, but there were not enough patients to really comment on that. So they were not approved for musk, whereas uh, Restigo is approved for musk patients and for acetylcholine receptor positive patients.